Hi friends, I'm LJ Jarvis, and welcome to part 2 of the Shaosan Enclave scenario. In part 1, we discuss why the Ethereals would choose Shaosan to lead the Damocles exhibition over Farsight, how she would take the plans differently over Farsight, and most importantly, why her actions on dealing with the Orc threat would make such a big impact on the Shaosan Enclaves. Impact as in why the Shaosan Enclaves would be so radically different over the far side timeline. And so for part two, I figured I would go over in more detail on why it is so, on why the Shaosan Enclaves would be so different over the far side enclaves. Again, this is Bud Meyer's scenario, and at the end of the day, I would like to hear your scenario in the comments down below. But without wasting any more time, Let's get into the meat and potatoes of it. So like how I said in part 1 of the video, Shaosun would use the plans within the Damocles system as an edge against the orc threats. Something that would, probably that would prevent the orcs from penetrating deep within the Damocles system. And with her taking her time to build up her forces, to build up the kill zones and all, and all that, the orc threat wouldn't be able to push deep within Damocles. Something radically different, I believe, from the Farsight timeline. And because of this, I don't think the Oryx would be able to land on the planet of Arthas Moloch, a sort of relic world in which Farsight and his forces had their last spell against the Oryx upon. But when they had this spell on the planet, incidentally, they activated a blood ritual in which a war portal would summon the demons of Korn and Sinch. And when this happened, this would also bring the death of the Ethereals, who too land on a plan to witness this new phenomenon, to witness what they believe to be a new alien species. And when the demons have seen the bright souls of the Ethereals, this would incidentally lead to their own deaths, something that would bring such tragedy over the Farsight timeline, and one of the reasons why Farsight would exile himself from his people. Because even though causing such harm to the planets within Damocles system had shamed him, especially after having to do these cataclysmic natural disasters in order to deal with the orcs, that was one of the shames that had brought him into exile. But the major shame of it all was when the Ethereals had died under his command, who were supposed to be under his own protection. And so when they have died, this had driven him into going to self-exile. But for here, within the Shao Sun timeline, because I don't believe that the orcs would land on Arthur's Moloch, probably even prevented by Shao Sun or forces, I don't think they would have to have this sort of battle on Arthas. And without having to do this battle, they wouldn't activate the blood ritual, and in turn wouldn't lead to the deaths of the Ethereals by the hands of the demons. But why is this important? Why is the survival of the Ethereal so important for here? Like, sure, it brought Farsight to shame that they have died, but here's something that I think most people don't seem to understand about the Ethereals. You see, the Ethereals aren't just another caste. They're the caste of castes, you could say. They're not kings or special politicians like that. In the eyes of the Tao, they have this sort of divine presence, even though the Tower are godless people and, and they don't have a religion of their own. The whole concept of the greater good, if you were to look into it, it is sort of treated like a religion. And of how they see the Ethereals, you can say that they are the sort of popes of society. That's probably the best way for me to describe them as to anyone who probably wants to know what exactly an Ethereal is. That they are these sort of bigger than life characters who are the will of the empire. It is they who united the Tao people within the young years of their planet. It was they that brought them to space. It was they that wanted to bring everyone in the galaxy under the greater good. The greater good is the scripture of the people. But it is the ethereals who are the figureheads of the scripture. It is they who are meant to guide the people. This is why it had brought great shame on Farsight, because of how big these people are, and what role they play within society. 
And with these subtle hints of mind control here and there within the books and within the codices, I also think they go beyond the ideal Pope figure. Maybe not so much as leaders, but more of puppeteers. Puppeteers in which they get to decide what is the greater good and what direction society must go, even if the Tao people aren't aware of it. And yet, when the Ethereals had died within the Farsight timeline, I believe this had cut the strings of the puppeteers, in which the Tao people within the Farsight enclaves were free of mind in a way. Not that they were like, oh, we're free now, I can think for myself, but more of they were no longer under the influence of the Ethereals, in which they would probably act themselves well, we have these planets now, but should we contact the mainland? It's not the question of can we, but more of the question of should we. But just as a quick side note, at this point, there is no third Farsight book. And by the end of the second book, this wasn't really explored more. Well, I mean, with sources like the wiki page, it would tell you that the Farsan enclaves decided to simply not contact the Empire again when the Ethereals had died. Yet, I feel like it doesn't really explore, well, why didn't they? Like what I've said earlier, they're afraid from their influence, but like I've said, it's not like, we're free, we're no longer the puppets of the puppet masters. This is probably something that the third book will have to explore, to give us the whys and all that. I understand that for part one of the video, I use the first two books as a guideline to go into detail on what Shaosun would do differently over Farsight. To do, okay, she'll do this, she won't do that, she won't do this, but she'll do that. And again, at this point, there's no third book to use. The no, what happened after Arthur Shmolek to go into detail like for part one. So, excuse the vagueness of this video. But like what I've said earlier, by the death of the Ethereals, the Enclaves were probably freed from their influence, freed from the puppeteers. And so within the Shaosan timeline, because the Ethereals weren't killed, because these Tao didn't land on Arthur's Moloch, the puppeteers are well alive. They are still in command, and they have their armies of puppets before them with Shalson being the greatest puppet of them all. And one thing to also keep note, when we're discussing Shalson's timeline over Farsight's, because of how she dealt with the Scar Lords, of how she dealt with them differently, and depending on if poor Malkior is part of the exhibition or not, I believe Shalson's exposure to the warp will be very, very minimum. Even though I don't believe Farsight has been corrupted by Chaos, I think his exposure to the warp, when he was dealing with the Scar Lord chapter upon their flagship, when he was washed in warp energies by their engines, when he was fighting against poor Malkior, and when that blood ritual was activated on Arthur Smolak, being exposed to all these sort of demons and given all these visions, I have come to believe that such exposure to the warp had caused him to have this sort of crisis of faith by the end of the second book, where he started to question. Is there something beyond the Ethereals? Something that they just don't understand? With the Imperium, they were suddenly made aware that they weren't the center of the galaxy as they expected. But I believe that by being exposed to what is essentially hell, this had probably made them believe that everything's not just material, that there's something outside of the material world, that there's these powerful gods looking upon us with indifference, looking at us with malice, with malevolence, again, causing him to have this sort of crisis of faith, and something that had probably caused him to go into self-exile. But with Shao Sun, again, because he'll probably deal with these Scar Lords differently from Farsight, because he didn't land on Arthur's Moloch, and if poor Malkyar was part of the exhibition, that would probably be her only exposure to the warp at this point. And she'll probably not even see him as a demon. She would probably see him as this sort of parasitic host. Not something possessed by a demon, but something possessed by a strange alien. And having such low exposure to the warp, 
And because the ethereals are well alive and are able to spread their influence to solidify the faith, the faith of the greater good, the faith of the ethereals, she wouldn't have this crisis. She wouldn't go out seeking answers. She won't try to quote unquote find herself. Her faith lies within the ethereals, within the greater good. And as such, she doesn't need to question this faith. If there's nothing to shake in it, then why question it? And so from here, after having dealt with the orc threats, the enclaves are able to rebuild. The Empire brings in more resources to bring up these colonies to become proper Tau worlds, and the Shalton enclaves will forever be a excellent example of the greater good, in which worlds of the Imperium weren't brought in because of war, it wasn't brought in because of a shot or because one army conquered another, but because of words. Words of how there can be a better society, how we can all work together to become something greater than the Imperium can be. And even though the Imperium had taken back these planets for a time, the Empire is able to fight for these planets. From here on out, the Shalton Enclaves, which at this point is basically a province of the Empire, will forever be a gem on a crown of the Ethereals with Shaosun being the shine of this gem. Most people will probably end it here, but there's one more bit of story that I feel like discussing with you guys that I just feel like will make a fun scenario. Even though the story itself is hardly detailed, and again, there is no third book, and this is probably something that won't be discussed within the third book, I feel like discussing it anyways. Being that... How will this province deal with High Fleet Kraken, a Ternan High Fleet that, within the far side timeline, had entered the system? But at this point, I believe that through cryo sleep and maybe with some modifications here and there to keep her going, Shaozun has aged. Like, I mean, has seriously aged. Because at this point, 300 years had passed. Shaozun will most definitely be dead. But like I've said, with stuff like cryo sleep and with some modifications here and there, even though she has aged, I don't think she would be any more older than Pure Tide, her formal teacher. She would be like a white dwarf star, a powerful star, but something that is ancient, something that's no longer the blazing young sun as it once was. Maybe here, Shao Sun has her own students, has her own little Shao Sun to teach probably even other students that would have their own identities. Then one day, High Fleet Kraken reaches their tendrils upon this province. And for this timeline, this will be Shao Sun's sequel, Last Hurrah. Even though the Democles exhibition was supposed to be her last hurrah, there's nothing wrong with the sequel. And what a way to end a legendary story than a province having this mighty grand battle against High Fleet Kraken. But unlike the Farsight timeline, because the Shaosun enclaves are a proper province, a piece of space that's under the influence of the Empire, something that's been built from the ground up, given all these resources, I believe they would be better prepared against the High Fleet than within the Farsight timeline. Because within the Farsight timeline, they're on their own. They have to start over. No longer tied to the Empire, they have to build themselves back up. And I imagine this would take some time. But with help of the Empire, the Shalson Enclaves will have a good fight against the High Fleet. But because Tyranids are so different from Orcs, despite all their weapons, despite using the environments, unlike the Orcs, the Tyranids would be able to push deep within the Enclaves. And maybe at this point, the Empire would summon Farsight to help out with this war effort. Two legendary figures to fight against his alien threats. Something that would probably make a great story. And so upon planet upon planet, Farsight and Shaosun are able to provide a good fight against the High Fleet. Eventually, Shaosun and Farsight are going to commence their last battle on Arthur's Moloch. And it'll be at this point, in which the Blood Ritual would happen. And it'll be here. When the warp portal opens and the whole planet is flooded with demons, when Shaosun and Farsight are exposed to the warp in this mass quantity. But to them at this point, 
this will just be a new alien threat. Something that just popped on, on this planet and it just so happens to be finding the Tyranids and the Tau. Though Farsight here is probably connecting the dots. That is because of this bloodbath. That something strange has happened. That something was activated that would allow these creatures to come onto this world. But Shao Sun and Farsight have a plan. Farsight will try to find a way to close this portal to stop the strange invaders, while Shao Sun and her forces go out to end this generated threat once and for all. Through all this fighting, eventually Shao Sun is before the Hive Tyrant. Through an epic fight, she eventually overcomes the Hive Tyrant, though at the cost of her own life. But maybe that's something that the Watercasts say. Maybe that's a story that they tell, even if it's not the true story. Maybe Shao Sun never kills the Hive Tyrant, maybe it kills her, and it was Farsight that slayed it. Or maybe some random squad of crisis suits, maybe even a ghost kill. But it doesn't matter what the truth is. What does matter is the story. And in this story, and maybe by the wishes of the Ethereals, it was Shao Shen that slayed the Hive Tyrant. It was her that finally ended the Tyranid threat while Farsight found a way to stop these strange creatures that suddenly appear on the world. Again, it's not the truth that matters, it's the story. And the story that they want to tell is a story of a martyr. A martyr that had gave her life for her province. But why is this important? Well, because of High Fleet Kraken, I imagine these roles will be ravaged even though they'll be able to be built back up again. It will be in such devastation that it will probably take years for them to become proper worlds again. It will take years to heal the wounds, and no matter what they will do, there will probably be scars. But with this story, the story of a martyr, they will have something to rely on, something to be encouraged to continue on with, in which the Tao people decided even though we have lost everything, we'll still keep going because, because of our province's namesake. We'll build ourselves back up again for Shao Sun, someone who gave her life for us. Even though it's probably not a true story, it's the story that the Ethereals want to tell. A lie that holds up this empire of lies. But this lie pushes the people forward. And so the people will go forward and Farsight is brought back into the mainland. He's about to be put back in the icebox, and the Earthcast finds something strange about him. His bow suit is holding this weird sword that he apparently used to fight off these weird aliens. A sword in which had somehow given him youth once more. Something that no chemical or no science can do. This is definitely a few questions that the Earth cast will try to answer, and something that the Ethereals would most definitely be interested in. But with that, this concludes the Shao Sun scenario. It was a lot of fun making this lore, and I had so much fun telling it to you guys. Something that no blog or tweet can do justice. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I would like to hear your thoughts on it. Are there particular stuff that you liked, or do you have your own little theory on what would happen differently? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And with that, I'll see you all not next week, or not even the week after. I'll see you all in 2022, as this is my last video for the year. I know it seems sun, but I'm starting to feel burnout, and I figured... This is probably the best way to end this year's worth of videos. I hope you guys enjoyed the content I was able to provide. Do not worry, I'll be back in 2022 with a brand new library of videos. With all said and done though, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next year. Have a good one.